Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. So, Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so there's, there's a few people signed on already. Uh, Ted O'Brien, uh, the acupuncturist, is logged on already, and he's going to be our presenter today. And I'm going to keep a close eye on the clock. I have 10.02 a.m., and we're going to officially start the class um presentation ted's presentation at 10 but in the meantime um maybe some of you who are already logged on um would like to tell ted if you've ever had acupuncture before now we could sort of just talk generally about acupuncture anybody had acupuncture prior to today yeah i've had acupuncture for um I have ulcerative colitis, and I don't know. Did they just want to try something new? So great. Did it auto immune? Yeah. How many sessions did you have, Emily? Um, I had probably like six sessions. Okay. Did it help you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Okay. Yes. Um, I had acupuncture because. I'm, well, I dance all throughout, like, elementary school through high school, um, and I was getting, like, my back and, um, and, like, kind of, like, my Achilles, so I went for, like, two times a week for, like, two months, and it really helped. I noticed a huge difference when I was at dance. Great. That's awesome. Good. Thanks, Vivian. Anyone else? Anyone else here try uh, any of the other modalities of Chinese medicine, like Qigong, Tai Chi, Chinese herbs, meditation? I'll talk a little bit about that during the lecture. Right. I, I have a quick question for you students. Have you um, blocked your video or or is this maybe a setting that I created? I'm not seeing your faces, and I know that Ted sort of wanted to see people's faces. Can can you guys um, try to unmute your video? It'd be the bottom left hand corner, I think. Right, right. If you don't want to, oh, that's there. fine. Hi, Hannah. Yeah, obviously, but but yeah. I think Ted would like to see some. So it's good to see you. Hi, Emilia. Amelia. Hi. How many people are in the class, uh, Dr. Dowd? Yeah, 45. 45, great. Yeah, awesome. but I was told that the um, Zoom allows, I think it's up to 42. Oh. Um, this to be on, so I could always mute my own uh, video. But we're beginning to see people. Hi, Jules. Hi, Mel. Hi. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so there is, there's 45, and I know that in any given class, students, when Ted gives this talk, there's usually somewhere like, oh, ten, upwards of 10 students who have symptoms currently, and if we were only so blessed to be to be able to, to have Ted right in the room with us he would perform uh, acupuncture on anybody who uh, wanted to try it out um, so Ted would ask questions like what symptoms do you have and he would skillfully find the correct sort of pathways indicating where he should insert his needle so and I will have a, a patient coming in soon, a friend, patient of mine, and I'm going to demonstrate. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, can you see that needle? I'm gonna... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very, very thin. This is an acupuncture needle for those who haven't seen that. Just barely. Yeah, you can just barely. Um, so that's what the one and a half inch acupuncture needle looks like. And uh, I'll try to do this during the lecture, but um, if you're interested in this lecture and you want to learn more, um, here's my info. I have a YouTube channel, so I have different like 
Qigong meditation exercises. I don't know if you can even read that, but it's called Medical Qigong 101. And uh, oh, excuse me, is there a link that you could send me after class? Yeah, and watch it absolutely. Way? And and okay. just just in case you don't have the link, if you type in my name and the word Qigong or acupuncture on YouTube. I'm pretty easy to find. And I just posted a video about the coronavirus and how you can boost your immune system naturally. Um, nutrition tips, uh, acupuncture, breathing exercises. It's like a 10 minute video. Got a lot of hits recently on YouTube. So a lot of self-help things you can do to boost your immune system at this uh, critical time, of course. So you can check that out. And then I have other videos as well. So just some free options for you guys to check out. <clears throat> so is it is it possible, Ted, to boost your immune system really quickly? I mean, if, if people are already suffering from a suppressed immune system, um, wouldn't the coronavirus be able to find them more easily? Or is it possible to boost up your immune system within a matter of days? <clears throat> well, I'll answer both parts. First of all, I don't want to sound like an expert in the coronavirus because obviously we're still learning a lot just about that virus. But <clears throat> yes, you can definitely boost your immune system. And I'll give you some examples. Um, I have an herbal formula, and I'll grab it later. Um, it's called Yin Chow, and I mentioned it during my YouTube video. But it's a bunch of Chinese herbs like honeysuckle and mint and herbs that are common in the West as well. Uh, but they boost the immune system. And if you take yin chow at the beginning or the onset of a cold, like when you're getting that scratchy throat and itchy eyes and cough and, you know, that feeling you have when you're just starting that cold, it's like, oh, no, I'm coming down with something. If you take yin chow early enough and often, you can knock it out before it even happens. So the strength of your immune system really relates to how a virus or bacteria is going to affect your body. And that's why certain people with the coronavirus uh, that are immunocompromised, they're being more affected, whereas healthy people are not being affected because healthy people, their immune system is stronger. So these uh, alternative um, therapies and techniques can definitely boost your immune system tremendously and, and often ward off uh, disease or virus or at least lessen the symptoms. And a lot of times personally with my patients and even myself, I've used uh, these herbal formulas um, early on. I feel like I'm getting a cold, I take it and then I wake up the next day and it, and it was like it never happened. And I've helped many people with that. So. So there's lots of things. And, you know, vitamin C, elderberry extract, there's a lot of things you can do uh, for your immune system. Plus eating well and getting enough sleep and all of those things too. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of fruits and vegetables, getting a lot of minerals and vitamins that relate to the immune system, as a lot of you guys know already. Um, so, yeah, I have a video. I talk about that. And I also do, I'm doing live streams now just like we're doing of qigong workouts and again i'll talk about qigong it's sort of like tai chi it's a moving meditation where you're just doing different breathing exercises to boost the you know white blood cells and the immune system strengthening the lungs so i'll mention that during the lecture that's wonderful ted okay well by my clock says 10 11. so uh ted and i did a kind of a dry run yesterday where we just zoomed for a few minutes to make sure that he could make the connection. And um, we talked a little bit about what he was going to do. So he's going to present to you students today as if we were in a classroom. However, I am going to manage the chat room. So what I'd like you students to do is mute your audio. Make sure your audio is muted so that we don't hear any background noise. However, as Ted is talking, go ahead and write into the chat room any questions that you have, and I'll keep an eye on it. And when we've built up a few chat questions, um, we will possibly stop just temporarily, and Ted will answer your questions, and then he can keep going. And as he said, he has a patient who he's going to demonstrate his skills, his, his acupuncture skills on a, a real person. So without further ado then, I'm gonna ask you again, mute your audio, and we're going to listen to Ted 
and I'll keep an eye on the chat room. So go ahead, Ted. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, so whenever I do a lecture, I always start off, when I do an a lecture on acupuncture, I start off my lecture by talking about energy. Uh, you know, what is energy? And, you know, when we think about energy, it's hard to formulate a good answer because energy is invisible. You know, you can't really see energy, yet it runs our life. It governs everything that we do. You know, we put gas in our car for energy. We put food in our body for energy. We charge our cell phones. Our cell phones are useless unless we charge the battery, and that's energy. Um, electricity in our house, so on and so forth. Everything we do on a daily basis is to acquire energy. And the Chinese, thousands of years ago, they started studying and mapping energy flow within the body, within the human body. And they found that there was different pathways, meridians, that energy flowed. And you could manipulate this energy and, and affect a person's health. So I don't know if you can see it, but here is uh, Frank here, uh, acupuncture doll. <coughs> and <clears throat> I can send you some more clear charts. Obviously, there's millions on the Internet. But um, this shows all the acupuncture points. And there's meridians that run all throughout the body. So this is like an Internet superhighway system of energy within our bodies. And by simply taking this little needle, which you may not even be able to see, this is a hair-thin needle, and you stimulate these points, you can affect uh, people's health. So when energy gets blocked up, uh, you can become sick. And by putting a needle in, you can affect that energy flow, much like a river. You know, when water's flowing, the farmland is irrigated, crops will grow. When there's a dam, the water stops, and you need to open up that dam. So think of acupuncture the same way. We're putting needles in to open up these rivers of energy, and the Chinese believe when energy is flowing and it's abundant and it's unobstructed throughout the body, there should be no disease. The body should be healthy. Um, so this is what I do. I do acupuncture on people to promote health. So I'm going to come back to the acupuncture part of it, but I just want to tell a little bit about my story, how I got into nutrition and health real quick, and then we'll shift back into acupuncture. So um, I was always interested in health, you know, even as a young kid and healing. And in high school, I was a competitive track runner, and I was always interested in gaining an, an advantage, you know, I was competitive. So my anatomy and physiology teacher taught me about carbohydrate loading. And I got into nutrition and then went to UMass and studied four years, got my bachelor's degree at UMass uh, many years ago. And um, I struggled with chemistry when I was at UMass and it took all of my time and energy and Long story short, my grades weren't great, and I didn't get into an internship after I graduated. So the suggestion was, you know, work in the community field for a couple of years, reapply for an internship, and that was that was always my goal. Uh, but the first year out of uh, college, I was working in the as a nutritionist in the community nutrition field in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, and I was dating a girl who whose mother was seeing an acupressure therapist, and. Um, you know, my girlfriend said, oh, you should, you should talk to her, da, da, da. And long story short, I got into this acupressure program and was really into it. And um, that kind of sidetracked my career. So instead of following the dietetic path, I started to shift towards Chinese medicine. And I started to use Chinese medicine to heal myself. In my early 20s, I started developing a lot of health problems, uh, digestive issues, pain all over my body, extreme fatigue, I felt like I was, you know, dying. Like I didn't know if I had cancer. I, I mean, I just felt horrible. And Chinese medicine started to help me. I delved into it and I couldn't believe how well it worked for myself. So I said, I have to study this stuff. I have to learn as much as I can. I just fell in love with it. So even though I was working in the community nutrition field, I was starting to study acupuncture and acupressure and Chinese medicine. So throughout my 20s, um, I worked as a nutritionist, but I studied acupuncture. <clears throat> and then when I, when I finally graduated acupuncture school, um, I, um, 
I was still working as a nutritionist, but I, I started my practice, my acupuncture practice. This was, I had moved down to Bethesda, Maryland. This is where I went to acupuncture school and I was living. Um, so I started a practice and uh, started working as an acupuncturist. It was a competitive market in Bethesda, Maryland. There's a lot of acupuncturists down there because there's two acupuncture schools there and it's a major city, you know, just outside of Washington, D.C. So um, fortunately, I used my nutrition knowledge. I was a licensed nutritionist in Maryland at the time, working as a community nutritionist. And when I started my acupuncture practice, I blended acupuncture and nutrition. So when I treated people <clears throat> with acupuncture, I would talk to them about nutrition or supplements or herbs. And, and that kind of gave me an advantage as an acupuncturist. And I was able to build a practice and um, and here I am, you know, many years later, I've been practicing acupuncture for almost 20 years, and uh, I love it. We'll talk more about the career aspect of it, but um, it all started with, you know, healing myself, learning to heal myself, and then learning to heal others. So it's been a, a blessing, and I love what I do. Um, Chinese medicine is a, an amazing field, and <clears throat> to talk um, a little bit about the other branches, so I mentioned acupuncture, and that's what I do. I'm a licensed acupuncturist, but there's different branches of Chinese medicine. So there's different ways to influence this energy, the meridians in the body. There's acupuncture, there's acupressure, which is like massage. You're stimulating these points by rubbing different areas. Uh, there's Chinese herbs. So herbs can go into the body, you ingest herbs, and they affect the meridian system. They affect the flow of energy and, and heal the body and they are amazing. Um, but there's also meditation, breathing exercises, visualization, body movements. Many of you have probably heard of Tai Chi. So there's another branch called Qigong, and that's sort of what I've specialized in and sort of uh, branched off into. I still do a lot of acupuncture, but Qigong is something um, that really healed myself. I, it's an exercise, it's a moving meditation where you're combining gentle body movements with visualization and breathing patterns, um, sort of like Tai Chi, but it's a moving meditation, very gentle and slow. And again, I have a YouTube channel. You can check out videos. I have a lot of free videos that you can watch and do a 10, 15, 20-minute workout. But I started doing this an hour a day uh, years ago when I was having my health problems, and it just transformed my life. I felt healthier than I'd ever felt in my life, you know, even as a teenager, you know, and more energy and my mood and physically all my aches and pains were going away and it just was amazing to me. So, so keep in mind, you know, if you're interested in acupuncture, it's not just acupuncture, there's a lot of different branches. There's even another branch, uh, nutrition wise, um, which I found fascinating because I studied four years at UMass, learned about minerals, vitamins, proteins, all the aspects of food that enter our body and affect our body's health. However, in Chinese medicine, it is a little different, <clears throat> a lot different. F different foods have had different energies, different flavors, and affected different meridians, much like a Chinese herb, okay? So, for example, pears are moistening to the lungs. They enter the lung meridian and affect the lungs. So if you have a dry cough or any kind of cough, eat pears, and that will moisten the lungs. So we didn't learn, you know, in Western nutrition, we don't learn the energetics of foods, but there's a whole, there's books written about the TCM, traditional Chinese medicine books, written about the energetics of food. You could Google that or Amazon. Um, but I found that fascinating how, how foods, it was a totally different nutritional approach. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. And my background in Chinese medicine. I'm going to go through a few questions that you guys usually ask me, not you guys, but past classes have asked me common questions. Um, do the needles hurt? Um, obviously, I can't demonstrate, but usually I demonstrate to you guys, and, and everyone in class says, no, it doesn't hurt. And uh, I'll be demonstrating on Kelly, a, a patient of mine, soon, and you can ask her if it hurts or see. She can tell you. But the needles are really hair thin. Again, I'll show you. Can you see that, Judy? Can anyone see it? I mean, I know you can't talk to me. Yeah, but I, I can see it. Sort of. And I can especially see the larger... Handle. Uh, 
right on your finger. Yeah, so there's a handle and then a needle part. So hopefully when I do the acupuncture, you can see, but there's so, I, I hated needles. I hated getting shots. I hated having blood drawn, you know, all my life. I still don't like it, yet I'm putting acupuncture needles in myself. I give myself treatments all the time still. And uh, they really don't hurt. You tap them in really quick and just breaks the surface of the skin and um, they just don't hurt. And when hey, they, hey, Ted, yeah. Ted, excuse, excuse me one second. So. I'm getting some questions here about uh, the connection. I'm not sure if it's my connection or his, but the video is lagging, and I'm having a hard time understanding some things he's saying. Will this be posted on Moodle? So um, there's like four people that have weighed in in that way. I'm hearing everything you say, but there's an occasional little drag of your voice. Mm. So I'm going to venture that some of this... Um, might be your individual connections students but um but i don't know okay now, i know ted has taught other zoom classes recently so did you have any comments like that ted um i did a youtube stream where i had some problems but i only did one zoom class and occasional little hiccups but mostly it went really well um yeah, yeah. so i'm i'm going to ask ted to keep going um, with this, but as he said, he's going to be posting uh, a link, or he's going to send me a link, and I'm assuming your link is to a YouTube that will go over some of this? Yeah, actually, I'm also recording this, uh, not with anyone's faces, but as a in distance, I'm recording, I'm recording my lecture, and with your yeah. permission, I will put it on YouTube, and then you guys could see it. It'll be a clear, yes, that'll be great. very yeah, clear. I think that's going to take care of it. Yeah, so I apologize if there's any uh, hiccups. Oh, that's all right. So I didn't want to forget about this question, though, that I had, Ted. Mm. You were talking about your education. How many years was the degree program in Chinese medicine? Great question. So it was three years for me. In Chinese medicine, if you are interested in getting a degree, um, a lot of programs combine herbology that I mentioned and acupuncture, and sometimes the programs can be three years, but if you add herbology, it can be as much as five years. So um, each acupuncture school is very different, um, but generally you'd be looking at like three to four years, and uh, different schools have different intensive programs. Some are longer, um, but yeah, I loved it. It was great, fun learning, and you know, to be able to, to just put needles in people and affect their body is is just so rewarding to people come in with pain and leave the office smiling and no pain. So, uh, so yeah. And the education was, uh, to me, a lot easier, like going to school for acupuncture. Some, some of the, my classmates struggled with it, but after going through UMass and all the chemistry and organic chemistry, biochemistry, acupuncture school was nothing. So it was, it was very easy um, compared to... Um, the the nutrition major so um so yeah any other questions i'll kind of go over go ahead Jean. no we don't, we don't have any more in the chat room so i'm sorry i interrupted you so that's okay I'll, I'll go through go the through question okay um another common question is what diseases do i treat what is uh, acupuncture helpful for um i really treat a wide range of issues um, but the most common is pain, physical pain. So we have, you know, low back pain is very common, knee pain, shoulder pain, um, fibromyalgia, arthritis, uh, headaches. Acupuncture is excellent for headaches. So, you know, usually when people come in with headaches, it's very easy to uh, get rid of. In fact, I demonstrate that on a few of my videos, some headache protocols that we do. Um, but also emotional stuff. Uh, the energy of the body really relates to our emotions. If you think of our emotions, you can't, you can't go to a doctor and have your anxiety levels measured or your anger levels measured or your sadness levels measured because emotions aren't energy. You can't see uh, emotions. You can see the manifestation of them, but you can't measure them. So in Chinese medicine, because we regard them as energy, we really study and look at the emotions of the body. So when I have patients with depression, anxiety, you know, anger issues, any kind of emotions they're holding on to, 
it really is phenomenal at releasing emotional stuff and, and clearing that in the body. Um, but then we have digestive issues. You know, it's great for digestive issues, um, all range of digestive issues, um, autoimmune problems. Again, great for boosting the immune system. If those of you who didn't hear when I first started, <clears throat> um, it's great for colds, flus, viruses, bugs, uh, things like that, because it raises the immune system. And I'll give you an example. When I treat cancer patients um, for the side effects of chemotherapy, cancer patients have to get their white blood cells uh, checked before they have chemo, because if their white blood cell counts, which is a measure of your immune system, the white blood cell counts drop when you have chemo. So if your white blood cell counts are too low, they won't do the chemo. So what I get a lot of feedback from my patients, um, cancer patients, is they will often say that the doctor was surprised that the, the white blood cell counts didn't drop, or sometimes they even went up after acupuncture treatment when usually they drop. So um, not only do cancer patients uh, feel more energy and less pain and they deal with the side effects of chemo, but um, there's actually physical proof, you know, or evidence, should I say, that the white blood cell counts uh, jump up. Kelly, you can come in. So, um, Ted, yeah. you put uh, a comment here uh, from Amelia. Uh, every, whenever I have a migraine, I go straight to get acupuncture. Uh-huh. So it's good for headaches. And um, Caroline says, I've grown up with a lot of back problems. Acupuncture affects sound a lot like chiropractic effects. I am interested in knowing perhaps if acupuncture is better for back pain than visiting a chiropractor. Have any of your clients said a difference they felt? Yes, so that's a, that's a great question. And chiropractic is great. I go to a chiropractor. Um, I recommend acu uh, chiropractor. So when you have back pain, there can be a lot of different factors to the back pain. You can have a structural, like if you're in a car accident and your, your spine gets out of whack, a chiropractor is great because they can just crack you back into position or whiplash or something. But a lot of back pain is energetic. You know, the energy that flows through these meridians gets blocked up and that's causing the pain. So that's where acupuncture is really, really awesome. I recommend both. Um, honestly, some of my patients come to me and they say the acupuncture works so much better than the chiropractic adjustment. Um, I'm sure there's chiropractors, you know, patients that go to the chiropractors that say, you know, the chiropractor is working better. So it just depends on what the underlying cause of the back pain is. Uh, but honestly, if, if I had, you know, any kind of back issue, I would, I might be biased, but I'd go to an acupuncturist first. I've had phenomenal results with back pain. Um, and it works great. Um, I had a patient years ago, uh, I've had many patients, but this just one stands out. She was uh, a woman around 40 years old and she was about to have back surgery or back, she had bulging discs and she tried everything, chiropractic, massage, Western drugs, you know, everything. And uh, I treated her several times and she was pain-free and avoided surgery. So I've, I've helped a lot of people avoid surgery. So it's really, really good for, for back problems. That's a great question. And um, let's see. Um, I know salary sometimes comes up. So um, what can you make as an acupuncturist? Being an acupuncturist, you're really your own business person. You know, it's not like I'm working for someone. I mean, you can get a job as an acupuncturist. Uh, there's lots of jobs out there compared to when I first uh, graduated. But... Usually most people start their own practice and uh, try to build a clientele. So that's maybe the downside. You know, it's, you're not getting a steady salary. Uh, but I like it because, you know, if you work hard at it and you're passionate about it and you're good at it, uh, you can build up uh, a clientele and, um, you know, really dictate how much you want to make. I worked for a Chinese guy uh, years ago right after I graduated, and he was uh, really well known in the Bethesda, Maryland area. And he worked for NIH, the National Institutes of Health. He worked on the White House Commission when Clinton appointed um, a White House Commission for Alternative Medicine. He was on that staff. 
um, and he has a private practice where he sees up to 200 patients a week, and he charged somewhere around a uh, hundred dollars a treatment. Um, so do the math. You know, I think he made at least a million dollars a year as an acupuncturist. Um, he had 10 treatment rooms, so I would be his assistant, and we'd go from room to room, you know, treating patients. And I only have three treatment rooms, which you know, some acupuncturists only have one treatment room. Um, so I'll see like you know 30 or 40 patients a week, and um, I only charge. I'm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, so I only charge 60 to 70 dollars a session. And but yeah, you can make a good good salary, a good living, and uh, depending on how much you want to work, um, I teach classes as well. I do the medical qigong classes. As I mentioned, Qigong is another branch of Chinese medicine. So that really supplements my income in addition to the acupuncture. Um, if I didn't do that, I would probably do acupuncture more. I'm only in the office treating people with acupuncture about two days a week right now because I do a lot of teaching. Um, but I used to work six days a week and see you know, 50, 60 patients a week at, at times. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's, you know, I love what I do. I don't feel like I'm working. I love my patients. I love helping people. It's really a, a high. It's a thrill to be able to to uh, help people. And when people come in in pain, uh, I'm sure most of your compassionate, caring people being in the health field, you want to help people. And it's just a great feeling to be able to influence someone so quickly with, with acupuncture. And I love nutrition. I'm still passionate about nutrition. But the problem with nutrition is you have to prescribe a diet and then hope that the person follows the diet, which is sometimes hard to get people to make changes. With acupuncture, they're, they're in your office, you're initiating that change and it can be very immediate. Sometimes it takes a few sessions, absolutely, but you can really initiate a change um, without your patients making a change. Even though I always educate my patients to, to make lifestyle changes, it doesn't always happen. So, um, so yeah, it's a rewarding practice and, and I enjoy it very much. So uh, I got another question that I can see. Dr. Dowd is, uh, would acupuncture help with joint problems? Absolutely. Any kind of joint problems, you know, fibromyalgia, arthritis, um, you know, different forms of arthritis, um, you know, tendonitis, it really helps. Because remember, the body is energy. You know, there's, there's meridians that run everywhere, and this, th these meridians affect the physical body as well. So by stimulating this flow of energy, uh, you can affect the whole body, and um, it works very well. Cat, yeah. Cat, I'd like to tell the students about a situation I had once that I shared.